We are live. We are live, and we are live. Yes, I believe so. <laughs> Why is it yeah, so we're, we're we're here, and we're up and live. So so we're not going to wait for anybody to move on in this week. Why? Because. Okay. We're gonna just get into it. All right, Chad wants to get right into it. But for those who are tuning in, I want you the opportunity to tell you thank you for joining us again. Um, on just after dark. Yeah. Um, I believe that this is one of the best talk shows out there, and it's not because um I am a part of it. It's because of the issues that we deal with each week, and I think that um persons have these questions, and we find unique ways of discussing them. Well, um. To not be as modest as Jerome, I do believe it, it is one of the best talk shows because we are a part of it. Um, as my <laughs> name suggests, it's Midas, anything I touch turns to gold. Oh and then we God. have Jerome here, who is also amazing. So, yeah, it's an amazing show. <laughs> so, I'm not going to be like Jerome, yes. It, it is because we are a part of the show. But, uh, yes. Chad, how are you feeling this week? Um, I am not feeling 100%, but I have to make the most of it, mm. you know? Yeah, you have to make the most of it and have a good show, have a good week because the work must go on. Yeah. Um, so this week, right off the bat, we will be discussing... Our topic this week is basically around reducing stigma and discrimination in the trans community. And I can tell you we have a wonderful show lined up for you. You know, each week we try to bring a guest that can actually speak to the issue. So that's exactly what we're going to do this week. Um, it's not just us thinking that we know about it, because a lot of times I think that's where the issues lie. But when you can have someone who is living the experience, share their experience, I think it takes it to a whole new level. Yes, it's much different when you hear the person's experience firsthand, because mm -hmm. we can share from our perspective, but not being a part of the community or not being the one experiencing their lives. It's a completely different thing when we see it for ourselves. Yeah, but before we get to that, you know we have to bring the eat. So we're gonna get into the hot topic and try to always say before you <laughs> <laughs> talk about hot topics you take. Let's have a sip. Sip. So the first topic is Wait, let me get something with Corona. Mm. Everything <laughs> is always starting with Corona. Because Corona doesn't take over, you know? The world. It, it's, it's global, it's not even just a local, mm -hmm. it's global and it's a nuisance, to be honest. Yeah. It's a nuisance. Um, like I said last week, the things that I do for my relaxation are outside of my house. Mm -hmm. So it really is challenging to not become burdened and bothered by what's happening. We really can't go there. We can't go to the beach. We can't go to the river. We can't go to the party. No, we're just there. Okay, so yeah. 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 So the, the first topic we want to discuss this week is that a BPO, and by BPO we mean a call center, as the as apparently in Kingston supposedly shut down. I can't even express this, I can't even verbalize this because um, I saw the headline this morning and it says that New Kingston BPO shut down after a worker tested positive to coronavirus. Which don't make no sense. Absolutely no because sense. Because they I probably me never hear the entire thing because they did take too long. I read the when, article. No, I'm not talking reading. I talk when the Prime Minister announced that all BPO should be closed for 14 days. And Which if was, army can count, we'll pass the 14 days. No, we have not. No, we also, have I not. Can't count. Okay. So I am now wondering if. And the article basically is asking the question whether or not this BPO got an exemption. How? That based on the announcements, there were no exemptions being given. All BPO. I guess I'm probably never falling out. <laughs> but this is, <laughs> extremely all BPO. this is extremely troublesome. This is extremely troublesome because this is exactly how it started at Alarica, where one person uh, responded or tested positive for coronavirus, and then it catapulted to us having over 200 persons now um, having the virus. 22 linked to one call center. And during the time where a call center should be closed, we're hearing that a, a worker at a call center has tested positive. I, re I really and they were and then, and then they were ordered shut down, which we don't understand if the... All right, so let's think pragmatic in this. So if the person was home, they're not working, fine. And they were tested because they were living at St. Catherine mm -hmm. and they found out to be positive. How has it been ordered shut down if them. No. <laughs> yeah, because if it was closed in the first place, so now I'm guessing it's the same procedure that took place at Alarica. All those workers will now have to be tested. All those family members will now have to be tested. All those persons that those workers could possibly have made contact with will now have to be tested. And what that means is just further strain on the limited resources that we have. I just I just can't understand what is happening. If you're saying that all 
call centers are supposed to be closed. Why it is that we're not yet on day 14 and we still at about call center forced to shut down? It should have been closed. Out. Maybe I, I still don't understand. I is this that is it that only certain call centers the rule apply for? Could be. Listen, Special I need clarity on it. I really don't know what's happening. I just saw the headline and I was a shock. Out of my only for clarity, I saw it like right before the show, <laughs> so I wasn't able to do any even further follow-ups. Um, this was on the cleaner. Yeah. Yeah. So I was <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wasn't able to do any further follow-ups. But it's it's quite troubling if if the order was given that all call centers should be shut down, and then there are some who are still operating on special provisions. I mean, I think it makes sense. And this from last night actually, I've been trying to call Scotia, and my, the phone is just say, and the recording is saying that they're unable to talk to me now. So me can't get service. So who do I work for? <laughs> That makes sense. No, everybody, no, no. But even more so, um, which I consider to be a topic, it was when the Prime Minister made pronouncement that, and I'm going to quote him exactly, the possibility is that all of us at some point in time will get it. And by it, he's referring to coronavirus. But you no, know, that is very Listen, troubling. So, even for me, I don't thoughts. have any other um, underlying illnesses. So, to be honest, I'm not that worried about getting sick for myself. I think I can survive it if I get sick. Mm -hmm. But I'm worried about my family. I have many relatives who have underlying illnesses. I have my mother, who is a senior. So, you know, it's not troubling for me. It's troubling for the people around me. So... To not be taking all the measures necessary and just hear something like this say everybody could possibly get it, including me, because I do have to work and have to come out of the house. Then going back home to mommy and my relatives who are who have other other underlying illnesses. It's quite troubling. And then one why I'm so troubled by this is because one is coming from the Prime Minister, so he has it's privy to more information than, than yes, you and I. Their so, models. Yeah, so they, they know what is happening on the ground. They, they are looking at projections. So to hear him say that, I am just really disturbed and troubled by it. And that I'm wondering if they are now at a point where, not to say that they are giving up, but if you think, because normally when you think something is going to happen anyway, you're just like, I oh well, yeah. things are going to happen. Oh well, I, I but, don't know. But that's I don't the problem though. We've seen that. it in other countries where they were dropping the ball or not continuing images where we see spikes or the numbers can start to go but even if their numbers are declining they start to go back up because mm -hmm. they relax certain measures so if it is now that we don't reach a peak yet and we're dropping the ball we're gonna hit i don't want to hear that like, <laughs> like seriously on the point of i'm um, dying though it did say i must say it did say that um covid is not a death sentence and that person should stop discriminating Stop causing this public and um, and chaos in the public space. Just be extremely mindful of that. Um, and on the point of discrimination, I just want to get right yeah. into our next point, um, our topic, which is Jody and Ferran Saga. Um, <laughs> oh Alright, it's no laughing matter. I'm just laughing at your yeah, reaction. Because you know when these things come up for me, it's really, it's more than hard for me. So first of all, when I heard about Jody dying because of not having access to medical facilities and and then it was also Jody and I were in the same graduation class I believe mm. so it all it also it hits home being a young a young person too and in a time now when you have a global pandemic if one person couldn't find a space to give birth because they thought that she was she had COVID what happened when it actually reach a peak yeah that I mean a sense and if like your prime minister said um, corona is not a death sentence and hospitals El, and El practitioners and I'm were thinking, supposed to be trained no, and they're supposed to know better than that and I'm saying if health um, practitioners and health facilities are practicing because that would have been outright discrimination if they're um, practicing and doing that what do you expect from it's the regular ridiculous man? because like my thing is people are saying oh but the private hospital may not have a space to isolate somebody. And by or private they hospital, we're referring Andrews. to Andrews. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they may not have a space to isolate somebody. They may not have the equipment to treat. And have foolishness. You're a hospital. If you don't have the full space to maintain somebody for a long period of time, you must have somewhere where you can have an isolation, even an isolation area. You're a medical. You're a set of medical professional. That's not an excuse. When you make up a makeshift isolation area, you are trained for these things. I know to many people. I should expect these things. Door. Really? In the yeah. event that you had somebody before COVID that came in and that was viral or contagious, what are you doing them? You send them home? That's ridiculous. 
Yeah, because um, oh, I understand the Jody Ferran situation, which is extremely horrible and troubling. Um, is that one? She would have been registered, if that's the correct word, at, right, the, hospital. at, at the hospital to give birth. Well, to give so birth, was, she has registered long before. <laughs> so she, yeah, paid, so she yeah. said that she would have paid paid up um, three months before, and that she was supposed to do a C-section. Mm -hmm. So they understood that this young lady had complications going in. They would have um, done all the necessary checks and realized that. For her to give birth, it would be safer for her to do a C-section. So she was actually on a bed, and then the report is that they got suspicious based on how she after was... After being at the hospital. After being there, um, that she may possibly have COVID. And then took her from the space and had her in an ambulance. Then they said they called UA Hospital, UA Never Want, or called Jubilee, Jubilee said that they didn't have any space, then she ended up at Spanish Town Hospital, thank God. Where she had to wait an hour to get her space yeah. to deliver. The only good news from this for me is that um, the baby, um, she actually gave birth and the baby is still alive and I'm just hoping the family is in complete distraught. I think the mom um, I was tweeting I a lot understand. about it. The hashtag justice for um, Jody Ferran actually was trending number one in Jamaica. It's just like I also mm -hmm. saw on the Daily Mirror just now, well, a few moments ago, that um, they're still reporting it. And the headline said three hospitals turned away possible COVID patients. And it's just that. embarrassing, it's extremely embarrassing internationally for something like this to happen. We have too many healthcare professionals here, we have too many people who should know better than to cause to act in negligence and cause my today because yeah. this is sheer negligence. I think Jody would have celebrated her birthday. Her twenty fourth birthday. Twenty fourth birthday. Um, yeah, recently I saw where the family members went out and they um, they did a balloon release. Yeah. Um, it, was so <laughs> it was very touching. And for the first time, I saw where they were hugging and they were crying. Um, when I saw the pictures at first, I was like, "What are these people in this time hugging and everything?" But then I was like, "Oh, it's um, the relatives of Jody." And I was yeah. just like, "I can't imagine losing it's someone. So sad, Nobody's man. gonna observe these protocols in this time." And, I, and I'm not. They better not people. try to go. So yeah, <laughs> so I'm not saying that um, people should just disregard this protocol, but I'm, I, I can understand that they would have been extremely emotional based on the loss. Yeah, yeah. it's rough. Oh, and, and by the fact way, is that she, tested, she actually tested negative for COVID. Yeah. Ridiculous. So, me, I don't know. I really don't know. Oh, going back to test, who would even make it worse? So, based on the person that came back, the person that were deported, did you see the report that one of them what tested for? Positive for COVID. But they were welcome with open arms. <laughs> and the young lady with pair of money and is has been living here. University graduate. Um, I really died because she was suspected to have COVID. Ridiculous. Yeah. Also, I must mention that the Prime Minister did mention that there will be a probe into the situation or the circumstances surrounding Jody's death. So he has ordered the Attorney General to and he said to use the state resources and the full extent of the law to ensure that all the details can be captured and who should be punished, he used those words, who should be punished um, will face the full brunt of the law. Um, so, yeah, that's that. I, I know, hope I mean, I know. who is to be punished is made known and they're actually punished. Uh, yeah, I don't want to hear that it was your fault and their fault and their fault and this couldn't have been avoided and the finger pointing is happening now in the media yeah, we, we want to see actual actual yeah, ones as, people being as it related to the finger pointing we see where one hospital is saying oh it's not them they didn't and have the media, facility you want to and I'm about like, back and forth. listen somebody died we really I, had, I have no appetite for it. I really could care zero with who fault. And if you don't want to discuss that, please don't be coming in the media to discuss like that. Like all, all of their press releases are them released. The first paragraph or first thing they say, oh, we are, we apologize or we feel sad for the passing. Let's keep all that because it's just one bag of fluff. It doesn't yeah. make sense. We want to know what happened and what was your role in it while the young lady dies. That's all we want here. Um, recently, we, we want to big up JPS though, who actually, <laughs> I think I'll say we have big up JPS for editing, Jamaica is going to be like, what? The big them up for now because the only thing they big up our life bill. Mm -hmm. but <laughs> and give them heat and stress. Yeah, but they actually donated to, um, what do you call them? Machines to help with the testing fa facility and okay, nice. COVID. Uh, so that was a big plus on their side because as we know, the government has been saying this is extremely expensive. So any any involvement of corporate Jamaica, yeah. we support it and we endorse oh, it and we encourage it. But in the same breath, 
the light will go on for the rest of the day. I'm happy for the donation, JPs. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Um, so there has been a revised protocol for the repatriation of Jamaicans who are living abroad. Mm -hmm. There, it's so, it's so much. It's a lot. Yeah, it's a lot to understand and grasp. So, like. I've been reading, I've been discussing, but it's just still a whole lot. Like one of the things I that stood out to me is that, well, two things. First of all, there are people who, it's not just anybody who can come. First mm -hmm. of all, there are people who are priority persons. So like based on what I've read, it's saying that persons who has traveled and then weren't able to come up before the ban went in place, and then the state would have to be providing assistance to them through their missions abroad. They they are the priority persons mm -hmm. most vulnerable to come back. So people like persons who probably were at school, them now have a big priority. Okay. So if them they are frustrated for come back, it might take longer for them to be repatriated. Or if you're in a country where you just basically believe that um, Jamaica is responding to COVID better than the country or state that you're in, just be like, oh, I am a Jamaican, so I want to come back at this I mean, time. Yeah. <laughs> basically, the government is saying that you wouldn't fall under priority. Then the next thing is that, which um, I don't think it's very practical. So if you come back, you have to be quarantined at home for 14 days. But a part of that is you will have to download, download the app, activate the GPS, and mm -hmm. they use that to track you. Like people that need their phone and they have to them and go and use like, and, and Download the app on one tablet, app on a computer, <laughs> and leave it. Come on. And most Jamaicans have more than one device these days, um, to your point. So if I'm going anywhere, I'm just like, listen... Are you the are the four the right? four that we just always keep at the house? Exactly. No, and no, half no, no, tree no. you. And if I'm coming first of all when Jamaicans coming back, we know they have to bring a dog so it, with somebody who live in our next community. So you have to meet up. Okay. And you, somebody always have something in your suitcase if you give to somebody. You can give to so, Mass GM this don't deserve Tom Brown or somebody. Somebody have to get some. That is where it was There's start and start to spread. So but, I don't know. But that's not about it. <laughs> There's another one, so that's if you're being quarantined at home. But if you're going to be quarantined in a mandatory government facility you have to pay 20 US per day for meals. Wow. 20 US per day, that's 72 is what? Me One fourth is 140 US per up. week. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? That's 140 US per week. It's a vacation. So what I'm to what I'm to add the hotel them when they get 140 the US per week. And what I read or what I understood from it is if you you still have to pay the twenty dollars, even if somebody will be taking the food to you for the three times per day. That's how the sentence <laughs> went in. I don't know if that's what was intended, but I'm assuming it's not. But man, man, guys, US per week. Mm -hmm. wherever you are in the diaspora, just if you don't have to, if it's not that serious and you can stay, and you are um, quarantining and you are staying in and you're following all the protocols, you're wearing your mask, and you're you're, really yeah, you wash your hands and you're trying to be safe, just stay. Uh, just because, just, like, me and the it, like, I spend probably between five and seven thousand after you shop for the month, then I spend like probably five to seven thousand for, for meals mm -hmm. for the week. One job for two is so That's much a lot. money. That's really a lot. And probably two to three Not, times. And that. then the thing is that, no, man, keep it clear. The same thing I said to the person who are in St. Catherine who um, are trying to find smart ways to make their way to Kingston. Exactly. Where Nothing is happening in Jamaica to. at this point. So if you're wherever you are and you're safe, just stay. Stay but not, not dance, not and keep. Carnival, everything can't do, online. Everything locked. As much as you keep and, and jive and them people you want. Clamped up and them still online. Yeah, and I think um actually and if you if uh, it's well, them you want. When I see big part, wonder if that affected. I haven't seen big part. There's a big part kept usually keep on Sunday. I know the fame party still happens mm -hmm. on Saturday, but the ones there are two on Sunday. When I see them, I haven't seen them since that announcement. Yeah. Um, another odd topic is that we read recently that cyber crimes and fraud are increasing due to more persons now being at online. home. Mm -hmm. So, oh my God. Not you in the festival tonight, sure. So, <laughs> no, ch ch oh my god, you're horrible. So, I remember because I've been shopping online too much too. Yeah, but it's now saying that a lot of persons, because they're home, is, you know what I'm saying when they're I love her. Whatever they're saying in Jamaica, saying is. Um, but I, I really don't appreciate it, and if you're a part of it, just stop. If you were considering it, just delete it no from your mind. Because at this, no, people are losing their jobs. A lot yeah. of persons are losing their jobs. And, and a little bit of money back. with them have, yep. them would really wouldn't want to be scammed. But in the, in, the, in the event that you would be able to recover the money, the 
going through the terminal to do that, especially knowing banks are closed and in some day. Have you have you ever had any issue where you need to recover money from the no. bank before? It's a process and a day, I tell you. I heard about I it, te- but it's extremely lengthy. Personally, don't bother me, but well, again, I do know, I do understand my, that I might be more privileged than other people, but like for the fraud, like being skimmed at the ATM or something. I've always said, maintain that it's the bank's responsibility to ensure that my money is protected. Yeah. So them rob me there and me, me not going to sit down for like two, three months away for no nothing. If I have That's a call the protocol. It, Even after I call calling after call several... every day. Shad, I am telling you. But that me, I tell you. Yeah, yeah, if yeah. I have to call yeah, every day in front of the bank. and I have to go there every morning before work or on my lunchtime, you have to see me and try that. No, but serious, what yeah. my money them way there? You're not going to take my money and then me have to wait two, three months. What am I for you to take care of myself? I'm just encouraging mm. persons to be vigilant because no more than ever I see a lot of things coming into my WhatsApp about oh click on this, this company is now giving some um re- prize. Yeah. Never enter for window. yeah, let me use this yeah. as an opportunity to tell you. See if when you send me a chain message done like that. I'm not reading it, so don't expect a response. And Once you send me, may I delete it? Yeah, and guys, Plato. the same way they are using online platform to scam you, use online platform to be informed. So when you yeah. get these things on your phone, Google, find out if it is in fact that these companies are having these deals or sales, so you don't just click on these things, mm. because what they are doing is that all these information are on your phone, and you use your phone to log into your banking information, your Facebook, your Instagram, so you are able to capture and replicate these information. So. Don't be too quick to be the winner of something that you did not enter. Yeah, you just you just lucky so lucky <laughs> charm. Everybody um, just you just win. Wake up and win. Oh uh, really? But for those are the hot, hot topics, topics for, for this, this week. week. Did we tell them how many persons in Jamaica before coming on? No. So recently, like just moments ago we heard that it's three hundred and eighty one people now are having COVID. Um we, you know I don't have five Wow, I feel no, no. with one entity being responsible for 222 cases. Big up yourself. 222 cases. Big up yourself. Well, um, we're gonna get into our giveaway because that's our favorite part so of the show. We're gonna give it away. Oh, we're gonna give it away. That's nobody never from last week. What do you mean? Person can person can still get a chance to even if you don't want to give away anything. Of course. Go right ahead, I'm always for the giveaway. Alright guys, if you can tell us um, the hashtag, I, I said it, the hashtag that was number one trending as it relates to Jody and Ferron um, after passing and our condolences going out to the family. So just tell us the hashtag um, that was trending on Twitter yes, um, in honor of sorry Jody. Alright, so that's that. We're going to give it 30 seconds to tell us Tom, because I have HIV, I'm really worried about getting seriously ill from coronavirus, you know, due to my compromised immune system. You need to top worry and make sure you take your HIV medication every day, on time, all the time. Really? Yes. The doctor them say if you continue to take your HIV medication as prescribed, it will keep your immune system strong and reduce your risk of getting seriously ill from corona. It's all you so well informed. <laughs> Jamaica Aid Support for Life. Them have offices in Kingston, Moby and St. Anne. Call them man at 876-925-0021. I hope everybody who have HIV stick, stick to, to their, their medication. medication. A message brought to you by Jamaica Aid Support for Life. Alright, so this week our guest is here and she is ready and as we told you before that this week we'll be looking at stigma and discrimination in the trans community. So, are you ready? I think we are. Are we so, ready? Let's welcome on set China McQueen. The Queen herself is here. Hello, hello, hello. Hi, Hi, China. Welcome. How are you? I'm fine. It's been a while since I've been outside, so thank yeah. you for having me. <laughs> thank you for coming. You've been trying your best to observe all the protocols. Yes, um, I'm really grateful. The inside is not cool. Okay. Not all right. Well, well, we are, well, let me just say, we appreciate you staying inside yes. because the more of us stay inside, it's a better for all better of us. For us. Uh, and we'll be safer when all of us are not, are, yeah. we'll be able to go outside. And we're also happy that you're able to come in light of what's happening because many people might have to turn it down when we ask yeah. to be a part of the show. 
All right, so based on the topic that we said that we'll be discussing this week, um, right off the bat, I want to know, how do you identify? How do I identify? Um, China is powerful, determined, unstoppable, very ambitious, doesn't really care what people say. It's like people outside doesn't mm -hmm. care what people say. So. I would say she's very powerful, strong, determined. And Bella is a, a powerful woman. Yeah. Nice. Oh. Woman. All right. So I do good pronouns, then it would be she and her. Definitely she and her. Okay, perfect. All right, so at what point in your life, well, I know for trans people growing, growing up, they might be at different stages of their life, they might identify as trans or they might step into themselves, as some person would say. At what point was this your uh, reality? I felt at um, one point I was younger, I think it was I was 13, yes I was 13 and I decided that this is this is actually what I want, this is what I want. I want to become that person and in order to become that person I have to grow, learn more, mm -hmm. understand the whole procedure, if you get what I mean, this homophobic country, mm -hmm. and uh, get into it. And it's still a learning process for me, it's still, I would say it's still a learning process. So you're saying that basically at the age of 13 you would have accepted and that you are a woman and yes. this is something that, so from that age were you telling persons to call you or use the pronoun her and she, were you using those pronouns from that age? To be honest, to be honest, I, um, I explained that yes, that I am a woman but I wasn't so sure if it was a good idea. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I wasn't so sure if it was a good idea so... I keep it in me so till when I, as I said, it was a learning process. Mm -hmm. I need to learn more. Mm -hmm. So I, at 19, mm -hmm. I decided that, okay, this is who I am and I don't care. Ask me a question and answer you, yes, I'm a one. Okay. okay nice. All right. So based on the climate, you spoke about the issues that Jamaica is uh, So based on the climate here, um, you are in front of us as a beautiful woman. Uh, when you go out, um, in public spaces and everything, are you always dressed as a female? Yes, I do. But to be on the safer side, um, please have your limits. I would say have your limits to be on the safer side because at the end of the day, we live in a homophobic country and we just have to be careful. Okay. Okay, understood. Uh, around, so persons often don't understand trans people. Um, as you said for yourself, it's a learning process. Like most of us too, we are still learning as we go along. What are some of the biggest misconceptions I believe exist for trans people? I always get. Um, I don't think there are viewers are here. Nikki, if you can talk a little louder first. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, um, we are always like described as bitter, very disgusting, we mean, bitter on people, don't know how to talk to people, don't want to deal. At the end of the day, we are all human beings. And if we do make mistakes, we're human beings, I mean, we just want to be like everybody else. We want to be as happy as you are mm -hmm. and coming as you are, I mean, at the end of the year, we're all human beings. And understand us before you start discriminating. Yeah. What about persons who say you're just going through a fit? and you're just confused and then one morning you're gonna wake up and all this it's just feeling and on one morning you're gonna wake up and all this will go away what would you say to someone who uh, without that mindset or, or, or want to, to say that listen don't believe what people say don't believe what people say um, have confidence in yourself be strong and just get up with it's not easy but just get up get out there and be yourself it's going to be hard at times but do not listen to people. If you listen to people, you are, it's going to you. So this is not a fear. This is not something that you see um, um, ending. This is your life. No. As a face, no. Okay. So it is who you are. You are a woman, and you know you know that it's who you are. You've been feeling this way since you're 13, and you've stepped yes. into yourself. And when you become 19, so I well, so I I you know I do, did some gender studies and understanding people and I think it's weird that people just don't take the necessary time to understand others mm -hmm. because if you don't look or act like they expect you to then they discriminate and stigmatize which is really ridiculous mm -hmm. especially in a modern society where you have access to information to fingertips. I read it. Yes, <laughs> people, people listen to what people say yeah. when they saw you there. 
okay, they have the same mindset. That's why I said you need to understand one another. Yeah. Um, personal that distance may say one thing and it may not have an impact on you, but what about your family? What about those persons who are closest to you? Um, would you have shared with them that um, your what the life that you're now living and you living your truth and have they been accepting of that? I personally was very challenging because half of my family did not accept me. Mm -hmm. So living the way I am now, they understand and they actually accept me. Because you have nice. to and not give up and point to over there that this is this is who I am and mm -hmm. you're going to have to accept it and they accept it so I'm very happy that they finally understand the person who I am. And by accepting her. I big up to China's family for accepting her because <laughs> you know it's a big challenge in the trans community too. And not even as trans community and LGBT community, mm -hmm. parents and families find it difficult to accept their children. And their parents who are still kicking out their children because they're trans or because they're a member of the rest of the LGBT community. What I wanted to know about, um, by you saying acceptance though, um, do the, the, the family members who um, accept, um, do they refer to you, do they use the pronouns that you prefer and also are you able to yes, go around sister. with you? Call him daughter and sister and auntie. Yes. Nice. And they refer to you by the name that um, China Macri. China Macri. Okay. Even right. give me nicknames, chai chai. <laughs> <laughs> big up them. <laughs> yeah. So um, we know trans people are often attacked and abused. Have you ever encountered any form of attacks, physical attacks? I wouldn't say physically, but verbally. Oh. I've never had a physical attack, to be honest. But verbally, was that's great. How do you oh, how do you feel in those situations? Are I know that you know you are way more empowered based on oh, what you're sharing, but. Um, back then, when you just started this journey, um, and when you came into your shoot, how did you um, deal with those attacks? It was really, I felt like giving up at one point, because, okay, since this is what's happening in this world, so I won't do this then. But I learned more, I do my researches, and look up to other transgenders, mm -hmm. and uh, I say, you know what, if they can live that, then why not me? And said, so this is what. Not listen to what people say. Mm -hmm. So, yep. So, one other thing for trans people, though, like again, people who might not know, they assume that a part of being trans is physical. You must go through a change, and we just want to say that that's not the case. Trans doesn't mean you have to physically change your body to be trans. It's about how you identify. Mm -hmm. So, and I know the questions are out there, so I'm just asking for the listeners or for the viewers who have the question, if it is that. Becoming well, becoming trans or a part of your trans experience is to be to go on treatment to um, gender affirmation treatment or gender affirmation. I think yeah, if 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 it's something that you want, if you are trans mm -hmm. and you want to take that part, you want to I mean get your hormones, do your surgeries, then yes, definitely go go for it. But it's not for everybody. Not for everyone. It's not. Not it's not a requirement or uh, anything of this sort. Um, would you say it's difficult um, dating in Jamaica as a trans woman? Nope. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Look at that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, as long as you find the right person, mm -hmm. then of course it, uh, it's it's not you know. Okay. It's well, not difficult. I thought you would have been. <laughs> so what what what's the I wouldn't say process because I I think a lot of us think that oh for 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 a person who don't identify as trans, they can just go on the, the road and go on regularly. What is it, is it? Is the process different for the trans community? Where do you to find a partner? Or for you? Yeah. What's your experience? Yeah. Wow. Well, actually, um. <laughs> what was that a woman? I'm, I'm, I'm telling y'all um, the response. What, what the response mm -hmm. I'm getting. What was that a woman? Um, but sometimes I do get bitter. Mm -hmm. But I I always get the bitter at the end when they finally realize who I'm actually. But oh, it, it's 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 a good thing. I would say it's a good thing. It's a good thing. But as I said, to be on the safer side, please know your limits. Okay. At the end of the day, yeah. Okay, great. All right. Uh, so again, so knowledge, we realize even with in our, in our HIV sector, people who don't understand certain things, then it causes them to discriminate and stigmatize. So we want people to understand more about the trans community. For you to 
well, not not just for you, because you said you've not had certain experiences, but for the trans community in general, what do you think could be different for people to be able to live their truth and be happy? As a country, what can a, yeah. what can we as a country do to make to be more inclusive for the trans community? I mean, like have like jobs that the trans who who want to be mm. yeah, to do not have an issue about when you're doing an interview. Mm. Mm-hmm. So there's come so policies that support trans women and trans men so that they can find jobs, real jobs, and not have a challenge with HR. Yeah, so we we actually want that. Instead of leaving our country and have to go somewhere else mm. to get a job like we want to be accepted here in Jamaica. It's if it's really um important as you have brought up that point because I think one of the beliefs um, for most persons is that the ultimate goal for a trans person in Jamaica or a trans woman or a trans man is for them to eventually migrate. It's the belief is that they can't have a family here. If you stay here, you'll be chastised, you'll be limited, you're you in a happy. box, you can't be happy. Um, and these are just universal um, universal rules in terms of and, and laws where everybody should, should be free yep. and should be able to be happy. So even our own vision 2013, yeah, to make the place of choice to yes, live, work, or raise some families. Of us, uh, some, of us, some of us trans, um, we're leaving the country. Mm-hmm. And, uh, but if some of us wants to stay and still be happy, I mean, do not have to, you know, migrate. Yeah, and that's yeah. a very important point because you should be, you are Jamaican. Yeah. So you are Jamaican, so you should be able to live in your own country and be happy. So our talking, policies need to support Talking about um, living in Jamaica and being happy, where do you see yourself in the next five years? Where do I see myself in A businesswoman. Um, owning your own business. By owning my own business, of course. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> now we're for the body. Yeah. Yes, um, finally, you know, coming out as in doing my surgery, surgeries and everything. And mm. Yeah, I see myself as a businesswoman. And by and surgery, I mean, you, you, and by that you're referring to do um, a complete transition. Yes, okay. Yeah. okay. 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 Nice. Cool. All right. I want to. <laughs> I I want to be a little bit uh, personal. If there were three celebrities before we get to cover international if, celebrities, yeah, if there are three, not inter- Jamaica. If there are three international celebrities that you, know, <laughs> you would date, um, who, who, who would those, those be? be? I well, I would definitely date Quavo. Shout out to Quavo. <laughs> 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 Um, Chris Brown, oh dear God, the last one, <laughs> the last one. Mm. I would say Drake. Okay. Yeah. All right, cool, China. So there you have it. If anybody have any link, Quavo, Drake. Except and probably Chris Brown, thanks to my beta, all my beta. But yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> I believe people can change, you know, people can change. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Chai, you know, I'm going to put it out there so everybody's aware. <laughs> But okay. <laughs> All right. Also, I don't know if I have any other questions for you, but my last question to you would be: If you were supposed to be um, prime minister for a day, what what would you do, or what would you what try? The first to thing you'd want to want change, to change, or see happens, want to change. I would be very more caring and responsible, responsible, responsible mm-hmm. because I don't see that happening now. Because well, this COVID and everything. I mean. Things are just happening too fast. Should have let us know what's happening before things just start getting worse. And things are getting worse. So I would be more care responsible and But in terms of the trans community, what would be some of the things that you would like to see um, from the government side? Um, the government side, okay. Um, as I said before, more jobs. Mm-hmm. To us to um at the end of the day, if I was having a friend, oh my god. <laughs> Yes, to be more open to trends, mm-hmm. um, have more jobs, and just you know prepare to see us walk in the streets. Okay, and that's it. So those are two very important things, you know. And you know, I'm I'm happy that China is here and China said it herself because sometimes when advocates say these things and say these are the things that people want, then we are thrown upon and say no, 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 go so. Mm-hmm. So it's always good to have persons who are living the experience come and share first hand. So know that we are aware that people are. Tr- Trans women and trans men want jobs so that they can go to work, make them them honest living. And this you know, needs to be a thing. And you know what I like about that? Um, what China is, is sharing that this mindset that a lot of time persons just want people 
this handout mentality that people give them things. These are this, the community is basically saying to you, we want to work, we want our own money, yes. we want the same rights that are given to everybody else. That that's all we're asking yeah. for. Nothing more, nothing less. And stop reducing communities to their sexuality or their gender identity. Mm -hmm. That's not the totality of the person. It's one aspect, not the totality. So then people don't just want to live to be trans or to live to be gay or live to be queer. They want a life. They want to work. They want to drive. They want to own. They want to be PR. Exactly. There's so much to be done. They want to eat park or run some laps. They want to go to the beach. I mean, they want to go shopping. And all the festivities. Yeah. So. Yeah, as a nation, we need to get to that place. Yeah. We need to have laws and policies. Like, one of the things that we can start, and it's something that we've lobbied for, is an anti-discrimination framework and mm -hmm. legislation where persons... Because in other countries, it's not a bed of roses. But at least there are recourse when things yeah. go bad and people can get justice when things go wrong. We don't have that here. Yeah. There's no That's provisions for them. So we can start with anti-discrimination policy and then we can just branch it from there. Because if that happens, it anchors it much other things yeah you can't discriminate when you're employing so if the policy is in place then trans people will be able to yeah. work and then when they're attacked or they are chastised then there is there recourse. is some law there's something that will exist there's something in pa on paper there's yeah. writing there's nothing better than they only say write it down for and proof. we help people mind yeah. their own business so we're, that's all we're asking because for. like said, yes, it like affect you know, they just we're not doing anything to you. Exactly, so respect people. Mind your business. That's, that's Mind business. Individual rights and liberty it has nothing to do with you. It's that simple. Thank you. But China. thank you for coming, China. It was great having you. Alright. Right. Tom, because my have HIV, I'm really worried about getting seriously ill from coronavirus, you know, due to my compromised immune system. You need to top worry and make sure you take your HIV medication every day, on time, all the time. Really? Yes. The doctor them say if you continue to take your HIV medication as prescribed, it will keep your immune system strong and reduce your risk of getting seriously ill from corona. It's all you so well informed. <laughs> Jamaica Aid Support for Life. Them have offices in Kingston, Moby and St. Anne. Call them man at 876-925-0021. I hope everybody who have HIV stick, stick to, to their medication. medication. A message brought to you by Jamaica Aid Support for Life. And that was a great discussion. It's so much better able to understand yeah. trans community and their needs. Because yeah. that's very important. I think for me, it would have been one of the first times I would have benefited um, so much from one of these conversations because it, it has always been at a distance. It's always um, hearing it from someone yeah. who's speaking for the community. We have just gotten the op opportunity for someone um, in the community, a trans woman, to share her experience, her truth, her reality, and basically. Challenge express what it is that she, she wants and to challenge the government and those duty bearers and also those who are do those who have a platform to make a difference she's just asking um that you make a difference yeah i agree that was a good discussion so after a yeah. hot topic and then having china on so now it's a time for a little fun Okay, so it's basically the time where we play a game and I win. That's, right. that's the name of this section. They call it Fun Corner. Jeremy you... won one game. One game. Chad, you said that every single week I'm win more for time. No, it's true you won the condom game last year because my hand was oily. And what you no. win? What's your win? Oh, you won that other game. Which other game? I won Scrabble when we had to unscramble the word. Him. I won... I won that game. Viewers, you know when we win. We don't even think about no, it. Even though, no, even though, no. Producers, bring it up on screen all the list of games that I would have won and the game <laughs> that Chad, all the games that Chad would have won. Is that like a look at the new All right, so our producers this week are saying that the name of the game is Name That Tune. I don't know, I know every Funny enough, song. I was about to ask for what the song left there. <laughs> for the music. But let's go. I'm ready. How do we know? Wait, what? so... I guess uh, who first calls Yeah, so the producer is going to play a song mm -hmm. and... The, Either Chad or Jerome, Jerome of course, will name the song. So who's going to name the song first? Wins. Them saying song and artist. Let's Listen now. All right. Whatever one of them threw at me. Wow. I'm ready. Let's go with the first one. Um, Vanessa Bling, independent. Future guarantee. Independent ladies, Vanessa Bling. Okay. <laughs> Miss Independent, actually. Well on, so Chad get off with the camera. Vanessa Bling. No, Chad, are you there? Can't All right. Me. May I stop looking for you? Well on, Georgie, we have to raise the hand and we press the button. Who first? Uh, continue. Alright, go ahead. 
ready. You're ready. I'm 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 